In this video, I'm going to show the proper way to hone a Subaru block um, on the proper equipment. Now, this is a Sunnen SV10, which is their latest automatic diamond hone. It utilizes diamond instead of stone. Um, the, here's the, the holder, this particular. It's got twin stick diamond uh, in various grits. Now, this, the honing head uh, does have spring clips to hold stones in, uh, but I, for most blocks, just take the springs off, especially on a Subaru. It's, it's essentially a blind cylinder. You can't overstroke out the bottom of the hole, and those spring clips will hit the main web, so I just take them off and use them uh, without any spring clips. It's not a problem. Here's the control on this machine. It'll do a lot of things. You can program, you can see here I've got the bore program, the length of the cylinder, and the next page I can put in whatever parameters I need to get the crosshatch I want. In this case, finished crosshatch of 36 degrees. Now one advantage of this machine over any other, even the, the previous Sun and models, which any of you who have one know that the head uses a spring-loaded guide shoe. You have to squeeze that shoe to get the hone head in the cylinder, and if using a deck plate in this case, that's very difficult. And if, you, if you're honing a V8 block, you've got to put that hone in that cylinder probably 75 times per block. Um, now I utilize coolant instead of honing oil. I have another small machine that uses vitrified stones. If I need to just do a touch-up on something. Um, coolant, in my opinion, is the best way to go. You get zero heat buildup. I can take ten thousandths out of a dart block, have zero heat. Uh, you don't have to come back after the block is cooled to check the size once, once and done. So this machine has an automatic dwell feature. You can just stick the hone in the hole and just let it go. And if there's a tight spot, it'll dwell there, and I'm sure this will, because I put a deck plate on this, and it distorts the cylinders. Now I've sleeved this block, put a lot of Subaru sleeves in, and so it's a hard cylinder. Not only is it a hard cylinder, but Subarus have a wrist pin access hole. You can see it down in the bottom there. Now that's a real problem on, on a lot of a lot of honing machines. You'll catch that catch that hole and break your stone. Doesn't seem to affect this this machine at all. Now I've got uh, got the bore gauge set up. Now zero is finished size. I should have about four. And we get about three and a half thousandths to take out of these cylinders. I'm just going to take a, a couple thou out to show you what the machine can do and how it's so user friendly. Again, I'm just dropping the hone in the, in the cylinder. I don't need to squeeze a shoe. And I'm just going to and you can probably hear a little bit of out around. I see it's tight at the top because of the deck plate or the machine senses that. And it'll, it'll stop there and dwell here again. Now it also shows you the profile of the cylinder as it's honing. Where there's more blue is where it's tight. And the machine after a couple of strokes see it was tight in the middle there, it stopped in the middle. I'm just gonna you know take a couple thou out of this again dwelling in the top where it's tight we're just going to let it go and it, it adjusts the pressure as it needs to as it goes and again i'm only overstroking out the bottom of this cylinder probably 200,000. almost any home stone you'd have to overstroke half in to not end up with a tight cylinder in the bottom. The other problem with normal homing machines is if you try to get the cylinder the size in the bottom, you're going to end up with a larger diameter about an inch and a half up from the bottom. It's just the nature of, of other types of homing machines. But this, this machine, it's expensive. It's, it's a lot of money up front, but it'll change your life if you do a lot of homing. Now this these, these Subaru blocks that I do, they, you can see it's got a big stud, 916 stud. Um, but with Subarus, 
the cases are so sensitive, you need to have them bolted together. I have the ARP case bolts as well. They have to be torqued together with the deck plates on and honed as an assembly, just like this. Honing two halves together, that's not accurate. I'm just going to chart our progress and, and just see how it's doing. And normally I just, you know, if I was fi finishing this block, which I am, I'll just let it go to the zero, it'll shut off and I'll be the size. But I'm just going to pause it here. Uh, see if I can hold the bore gauge and the camera at the same time. Not sure this is going to be easy. Okay, you see we're down to about, I can hold the gauge steady, two, two thou, two tenths, three tenths, somewhere in there, see, two thou, two tenths, right at the bottom, two thou, two tenths, all the way up and down this cylinder, dead straight. Anybody who hones for a living, you know, you know how hard it is to achieve that, and here I've done it with absolutely no input from me, it's all machine. Um, and I, I, any block that you that you do, I do also do some some early Harley cylinders that are extremely blind, long blind cylinder. I sleeve them or bore them, and same thing. You get zero zero taper in those cylinders, which is impossible to do with any any other style home. Um, so that's just a a good uh, intro to this this type of machine and what's available. And if you're not getting results from your machine shop. Look for a shop that has one of these.